Hey, good morning to each and every one of you. Uh, very wonderful, blessed good morning to you uh, on Wednesday, the 3rd of June, 2020. Uh, kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Robin Williams back in the movie uh, Good Morning Vietnam. You know, he used to always come on the radio in that film and say, Good morning, Vietnam, you know. But I'm saying good morning to you uh, locally. Uh, and globally as well. So thank you again for joining us this morning for Peace Through the Word. And again, that's exactly what we want to do, is tr uh, attempt to give you genuine peace through the Word of God in Jesus Christ this morning and every day, every morning. That's our, that's our mission. That's our ministry. And so uh, I, I would really appreciate maybe hearing back from you. Uh, you can... A text uh, how this ministry is being received by you uh, your thoughts about it whether you like it whether you dislike it uh, anything you want to add to, to let us know let us know what you think about this piece of ministry I really would like to hear from you and I would like to hear how you're doing wherever you may be and let us know where you are um, I, we, we mean that from the bottom of our hearts this ministry is a wonderful piece of ministry that has evolved, if you will, uh, through this pandemic from Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church down in Benson, Arizona, here in the United States. And uh, God does some incredible things regardless of circumstances because he dictates and orchestrates those circumstances anyway. So what a blessing that is. So brothers and sisters, this morning I'm going to be sharing, uh, I'm going to depart from Dr. Martin Luther this morning, and I'm going to share you a devotional from uh, Portals of Prayer again this morning. I think it's very apropos uh, for what we're looking at today. Uh, and we're going to be look, talking and looking at um, walking in the light uh, this morning. Uh, our world, and here in the United States, it's pretty dark, even though the sun is out here in southern Arizona. Uh, our country is very much dark because of sin. We've got cities burning. We've got curfews enacted uh, here and even in my city, Tucson. We can't be out supposedly. Well, we can dine out, but uh, after 8 o'clock, there's a curfew in effect. And this is going all over. We've got major problems in New York City and Minneapolis and just, just about all over. And the reason being is because uh, our country is being torn apart by sin tremendously. Uh, and it's being torn apart. Uh, the United States is a misnomer. It's no more united than anything. It's very much fractured. And I'm not so sure that it's going to be coming back again, uh, together. Uh, I don't have that confidence, unfortunately. But uh, it's really darkened because of sin. And a lot of that, I think, can be attributed to perhaps maybe the church not being the church that Jesus has wanted it to be. But that's a subject for another day. All right. So I'm going to share with you walking in the light. Because even though it's dark, there's still incredible light that needs to be sh shown and that is shining regardless of the darkness around us. All right, so I pray that's going to bless you immensely this morning. All right, through peace through the word. All right. So brothers and sisters, we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear our voice. In the morning, we prepare a sacrifice for you, and we watch. Our mouths are filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouths will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, the very first uh, reading I want to share with you is from the book of Psalms, and it's Psalm 27. And I want to start in, down in verse 11. It's a beautiful psalm. And you might want to give it a read on your own, the entire psalm, if you will. It's not all that long. But I'm going to start in verse 11. All right? 
Pray it's going to bless your heart in, in incredible ways as we hear these words. The psalmist says, Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Oh boy, we've got some. <laughs> okay? Then he says, Give me not up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they breathe out violence. You've got violence all over the place. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Now listen to this. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Again, wait for the Lord. God's word for us this morning. We need to wait on the Lord. All right? Now, uh, I want, to, want us to look at uh, Isaiah uh, chapter 2, the first five verses. And uh, listen to how this light of Christ is to shine in the midst of darkness. You know, while it's dark around us here in the United States and around the world, it's a tremendous opportunity for the Christian church, locally, regionally, nationally, and internationally, uh, to shine brightly, to shine very, very brightly. Okay? Incredible opportunity. So listen to these words from Isaiah the prophet in Isaiah chapter 2. It shall come to pass in the latter days for which we are living right now. That the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains. This is our time, church, to shine, to be the highest mountain in the world. The world is looking for answers, and they can't find it in the political arena, and they never will. They only will find the answers in, by, and through the Christian church. This is our time. <clears throat> and shall be lifted up above the hills. The Christian church will be lifted up. Big time. And all the nations shall flow to it. They won't have a choice. And many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. Why? That he may teach us his ways. That's the mission of the church, to teach people Jesus' ways, how to live out their lives because they don't know how. We've got the answers to how people should live out their life. That needs to be shared. Obviously, they don't know how to live out their life. They can't even be law-abiding citizens and behave themselves. They don't know how. We have to teach them. Okay? So come, let us go to that mountain of the Lord, so that he may teach us his ways. For out of Zion shall go the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and he shall decide disputes for many peoples. <laughs> and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. See what Jesus that will be the end of hostility. Only in Jesus, not in political parties or the political arena or governmental enactments, but only in the person of Jesus Christ. So, O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. God's word for us in tremendous ways this morning. So listen as to how this is unpacked for us this morning from this devotional. Darkness 
is often relative. The sun may have set, but our evening walk may still be illuminated by street lights in the city, yard lights in the country, or maybe even a flashlight that we carry with us. <laughs> we say we are walking in the dark, but that's not exactly so. In Holy Scripture, light and darkness are complete opposites. God is light, and in Him there is no darkness. So we cannot say that we have fellowship with Him while we walk in darkness. That's a misnomer. It's a contradiction. All right? Isaiah, the evangelist of the Old Testament, also emphasizes this theme, describing the dramatic change that Christ our Savior makes in the lives of those who know him. As sinners, we are prone to make excuses for our behavior. And we do it all the time, including Christians. All kinds of excuses. You know? Labeling some transgressions as not so bad. Or thinking that if everybody else is engaging in an questionable activity, then it must be okay. You know, it's okay if I don't go to church. It's okay if I don't make regular use of the means of grace. It's okay that I can behave like the rest of the people. No, it isn't. When Isaiah exhorts us in today's reading, he is commanding us not to dabble in the darkness or compromise with evil in any way. When we walk in the light of the Lord, no flashlight will be necessary. You will need it. Discard it. For Jesus is our total salvation and illumination. What a comfort. What peace. Right in the midst of chaos. Amen. <laughs> That's what Jesus does. You know, Jesus told us this. He said, you know, uh, I, will, I, I have come to give you peace. Not the peace that the world gives, but peace right in the middle of chaos. Jesus gives that to us today through the light of his gospel. So Holy Spirit, like divine, shine upon our hearts. Cause the shades of night away, chase the shades of night away, and turn the darkness in today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Tremendous blessings to you. I pray that will give you real, genuine peace this morning and throughout the remainder of your day and week. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning direct its continuance and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin and our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept us this night from all harm and danger, and we pray that you would keep us this day also from sin and every evil that all of our doings in life may please you. For into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, and our souls, and all things. Let your holy angels be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> so, brothers and sisters, I pray that our time together this morning has truly been a blessing to you. Again, I would sure love to hear from you as to how this ministry is received by you and, and how you either like it or dislike it. Uh, also, feel free to share what... Um, ah, I left my fan on again. Darn it. Um, <laughs> but how, how we can improve our ministry. Uh, I, I meant to turn my fan off. Uh, I just forgot. Please forgive me. I, I apologize for that. Sometimes that can be distracting and I see it spinning. <laughs> So forgive me, uh, I, I appreciate your indulgence. Uh, sometimes my wife will catch that for me. She's not here, she's working right now, but, but I apologize for that. But let it be known uh, as to how this ministry uh, 
affects you in, 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 in the good and not so good, whatever it may be. We, 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 we want to hear from you. So go in God's grace and mercies. Again, serve him as he gives you those wonderful opportunities today. And again, wheels up, blue skies, and enjoy the day. Many blessings in abundance. Amen.